Hello everyone, uh, I'm Seth of the Seth Codes Things YouTube channel. I am, this is going to be the next video in my series for intro to programming. The, as always, I have a glossaries, I'm a glossary. <laughs> and I will define, try and define terms so that you can Google things on your own. If I miss anything that you would like to find and add it in the glossary, leave a comment below and I will add, and I'll add it in there and define it as best I can. And at the very least I'll try and respond with a comment. <laughs> All right. So let's get started. Some of the video is about variables and types. The a variable is a symbol that refers to a to data in a computer. That's all it is. Symbols are used in things like regular spoken languages. For example, a name. It's like you say Charlie. Hey Charlie. Hey Chuck. You know. Sometimes people couldn't even have multiple names for the same place. You know, or person or thing. You know, like the Big Apple or New York. Someone's going to hate what I just did. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> so, yes, a variable is a symbol that refers to data in a computer of some kind. It can be, in computers, the some of the lowest level forms of data are words and numbers and characters, things like that all of which are represented in binary. Anyway, to what we, how we refer to the kind of data that the symbol refers to is a type. So, for example, if you have a bank account, you would want to have numbers to represent your balance. You probably don't want to use pictures, for example. Yes, yes, I am paid in internet cat pictures. Some of us would be rich if that's how what our currency was. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. We, so you would say the type is a number of some kind. The type can also be a string or character, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. So that those are types. So the way that they are represented in computer memory is called binary. Binary is all a binary is is it's a different way to write numbers down. The difference being it can only be with zeros and ones. And you take this long list long string of zeros and ones and that's how you will interpret your data it's important to note that the memory in the computer you can actually you can take data of one kind of as zeros and ones and you can at the very least try and represent it as another type to get another kind of value but that is more than you need to know for now so let me show you some of my notes. Notes. Ah, camera's in front of my notes. Oh, no. Ha, there we go. Okay, so here I've done a kind of a representation of computer memory. In computer memory, we have, it's, you can think of it as a, just a really, really long list and the list contains a has an a place that's assigned a location, and then on the other side a value or data, which is the ones and zeros. I have I'm going to link a a uh, what's it called? I'm going to link a blog post that I wrote about that goes a lot more in depth in binary. Binary is important to know and at higher levels of computer programming. Most people don't have to deal with it in their day-to-day -day lives. So you're probably safe if you miss it, at least for now. 
the I also I wanted to go over some common types in you can probably read this uh, yeah integers which are numbers that don't have a decimal place floating points some peop some languages will call it a double um, or refer to them as doubles but they still have floats but anyway those are numbers with a decimal place so 3.3 .3 is a decimal 3 is an integer strangely enough 3.0 is a floating point and not a decimal anyway we have booleans which are represent a true or false value and we have characters which represent a you know a single character a poop emoji or an a or anything like that and then we have a string which is another common type but a string is really just a sequence so like a whole phrase so what I would like to do now is I want to demonstrate uh, that. there we go so what I'd like to do now is I want to demonstrate for you how to make your own variables in Rust and demonstrate to you some of the different types of variables particularly numbers. I'm gonna, I'll go over strings in more detail in another video. And especially because they're pretty weird and wonky and complicated. Anyway, so yeah, let's get started on that. Yeah. Okay, so here I have an empty method thing for, uh, to start with. At this point, I do want to let you to define two more words. Variable declaration. A declaration is how you introduce to your, the computer, hey, I need this variable. I'm declaring it now. This is what I need. When you declare a variable, it is a way to let the compiler know you need a place to store some data. So the keyword for that is let. Let is your declar declaration keyword. What you do next is you follow it by a name. So let's just call it, how about bank number? Or how about balance? Let's do balance because I used that example. Okay. And then you can do the second word that we need, which is an assignment this the equal sign sometimes you'll well you'll it's also known as the assignment operator an operator the word operator meaning it does something so that's really it fancy word for it does something so at this point you can also just declare the variable like this this will work uh, let's see I think it's no not that one yes kill it <laughs> okay, so we can compile that. Oh, hmm. interesting. Didn't know that was going to happen. Okay, so I just learned something else. In Rust, you need if you are going to do only declare a variable, you do need to let the, the compiler know what type. The way you do that is through a type annotation. So, which is after the name, you put a colon, and then the type. So, remember how I said integer is a type? Some of those, let me go over some of those types. We have i8, uh, that's my plugin acting up, i16, i32, i64, I need to un uninstall this plugin. You know, those ones. These are integer types, the difference being how many bits, how many ones and zeros you have to represent the value. 8, 16, blah, blah, blah. You can also do u. It's a different kind of integer. The difference being, practically, a u cannot be zero. It will, it's, you cannot have a u integer as 
No, not zero. That's a lie. You cannot have a negative number with U types. There. Okay. So let's give this a type of I32. Okay. Try and recompile. Actually, let's clear the screen and then try and recompile. Okay. The warning being, hey, why you, you made a variable you don't need. Good feature. Okay. So if we want to give this variable a value, we do an assignment. So let's assign 42. Let's see if this compiles. Yep. Actually, I'm just going to do rest C. Okay. Okay. So now we have two warnings you know, there, and then we just use an assignment. Now it's complaining that we're not we made a value, and we're not using it. We we did both, and it's complaining about both things, which is fine. We're just showing you. So if the way that you can print something out using this print line. This is technically, a, this is called a macro, and for now, just know this is how you get data out of, to show out of your program. So balance is, this, sim, doing that symbol right there means put whatever I put in after the comma there. Okay. Okay, it compiled without problems. And it works. Okay, and I'm going to add to this. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying clear the terminal, and if that works fine, compile, and if that works fine, run the program. Dot slash, yeah. Okay. All right. So here we have that. This is one last note. You can do the assignment and declaration at the same time. And if you do the assignment and declaration at the same, well, let's show you that that works. You can drop the type type annotation. The reason why is because it will infer the type. It, it, the compiler is smart enough to know, hey, you're doing the assignment at the same time. I know it. I'll just give it a type. However, if you do it this way, and it actually does matter what size of integer you, you need, then it's going to, I think what it defaults to is whatever, basically your whatever type, which is dependent on your processor and your, the computer you're running on. Okay. Anyway, so one thing I'd like to also mention right now is so in this, there's another word, mutability. Mutability means whether or not it can be changed, or in this case, reassigned. For example, here, let's say I try and do balance equal to that. It doesn't like it because the variable is immutable. In order to make it so you can reassign a variable if it matters to you, you add the, to your declaration, you declare that it's a mutable variable. Let the mutable variable balance blah, blah, blah. And then it'll work just fine. Uh, see here, it complains about not using the signed value. It's, yeah, but this is a demo. So here's the idea behind it. If you have a machine with a lot of moving parts, things that are changing all the time, typically it becomes less efficient. You have parts that can fail quicker. You have a lot of things that can go wrong. It is a programming practice. It is good to use only use mutable variables when you need them, which is a great feature built into the language. And this 
is something that if you do a, another programming language, keep that in mind. Try and only declare something mutable if you need it that way. Okay. So that's variables, mutability, and types. The next video I'll do uh, figure out exactly. There's so many places we could go from here. However, if your assignment to, uh, that, that, sorry, having problems with OBS. Okay, so your assignment, if you've watched it this far, or even if you haven't, would be go ahead and mess with a lot of the, with the other types. Make other variables and just see what happens. Try reassigning, try doing other things. If you have any questions, go into the comments. Or you could post on Stack Overflow, or probably the place I'd go is users.rust-lang.org, which is the Rust forum. Anyway, um, so yeah, one other thing that I would like you to do uh, to mess with is using these variables, you can also do math, such as that. If you, oh, let's make it uh, back there. So you can do things like that. You can also mix types, kind of. Oh, nope, I guess you can't. Weird. You can in other languages. So this Rust is not my first programming language. Okay, so go ahead and mess with that, mess with operations. One particular thing I'd like you to do is mess with division and using just integer types, where you might get some weird results. And then, when you get weird results like that, go ahead and research them. You have more tools to do that now. If you get stuck, leave a comment. I'll try and either answer your question or do a resource, or point you to a resource. But that's your assignment, and go crazy, go ham, go, go gadget YouTube. Thank you, and bye.